Hello, welcome to episode 15 of your hyper irregularly scheduled programming, <laughs> uh, the Hammered Out Podcast with me, Mallet. Me, Sledge. That's right. Today, um, we're going to be going over probably only two topics, but um, they're probably going to take a while. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into it. It broke. It broke. Okay, there was supposed to be a hammer sound there. We're not adding it. It's we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Moving on. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we played the sound clip several times over to make sure it worked, and now it doesn't work. So anyway, oh there it is. Oh okay. Refresh the page. There, there it went. Uh. So throughout the uh, the history of this podcast, the the, uh, the two year f- fourteen episode long history of this podcast, um, yes, I feel like eighty five percent of it to ninety percent of it has been me talking, and when I go through these episodes, yeah, and I skip through them just to like see what's you know whatever, yeah. it's always me talking. <laughs> But today you had a topic. I had a topic that you want to talk about. Yes, um, it's the Naughty Dog debacle that happened last month, and I pretty much just waited until you know everything was already done, said and done. You know, mm-hmm. even though I'm pretty much late to the party, everyone's already covered everything and made several fucking videos. Yeah, everyone's out. gotten all the good stuff. Yeah, and you're left with like. Checks mix. Yeah. But hey, you know, it's called journalism. All right. Actual journalism. Journalism? <laughs> yeah. You know, actually waiting for the story to come out. I think journalism is a process of getting the story. Yeah, I was getting the story. That's like two nights All ago. All the other journalists got the story already. Yeah, but they were jumping on and jumping ahead. You know, they were, they were making get. I don't know. I'm just bullshitting. Anyways. Um... <laughs> So, uh, uh, fuck. So, Naughty Dog is making a game called Last of Us 2. And, uh, um, you've watched some people play the first one, and it yes. was, the first one was a well received game. I liked it. Um, gameplay was very interesting. Um, as I told, uh, Sledge earlier today at the gym, all I remember from watching Soda Pop and play The Last of Us is when he rounded a corner and there were giraffes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, animals got out of the zoo and... Yeah, I know. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, Naughty Dog is making The Last of Us 2 and it, the basically the whole premise of the, of the story was leaked. Mm-hmm. Um... And at first it was kind of said that it was an angry worker who, you know, got pissed at low pay and was overworking because of like crunch time. I don't know if you heard of crunch time. Well, I mean, everyone in the gaming industry is like work to the bone, it seems. Yeah. Well, at first it was said that that was the case, but it turns out that that's not really what happened. I think people just saw that one someone saying that just jumped on it. Mm -hmm. But what actually possibly happened that people are more leaning to is, um, hackers. Hacker Uh, mans. Yeah. Hacker mans. Um, there's like some files within the previous last of us game. And then uncharted four that whenever I guess Nidog quits updating the game, there's like this certain key that Amazon gets. And, People found that key and was able to, you know, work their way into the system and get footage from The Last of Us 2, and they leaked that. I'm or, yeah. So the key they get from Amazon is permanent when, they're no longer, when they no longer update the game, mm-hmm. and this key gives them access to everything from that developer, or what exactly? Kind of, yeah. 
Uh, but it's like specifically Naughty Dog, just from what I understand. What a terrible security infrastructure. Yeah, no. Uh, from what I hear, from what I hear, that they reme- immediately changed that. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, so what? What basically the story is is that you play as one of the main characters from the first one, Ellie. Um. She's all grown up now, basically, and she and her girlfriend and their dude friend were living at, I guess, at the uh, settlement that they made up back in the beginning of the first game, and they were basically starting to laugh for themselves, and some cult in Seattle came over and fucked their shit up, so they went over there. But little did they know that some other chick and her group of friends hate them because Joel from the first game killed the other character, Abby, who was the main antagonist in the second one. He killed her dad, who was a doctor in the Firefly group at the end of the first game after he went on to commit the Firefly massacre, as they say it. And and she's pissed, so she's hunting them down. But then Joel somehow gets wind of Ellie in Seattle for but because for some reason he fucking left the group after he saved Ellie. All right, you guys can't see this by the way, but I am just silently nodding my head as he says all of this. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to let them know. Right. I needed I needed Jimmy the Wigwam and Chev Camaro Man Eleven both to know this. All right. All right. Anyway. Anyways, so uh, Joel finds Ellie, and at this part of the game, you're playing as Ellie, and it may basically it kind of goes like similar to how the first game played out because at the beginning of the game, you're playing as Joel, and then I think it's like Joel gets hurt or some shit and you play as Ellie and then she gets captured by the Firefly people and and then at the end of the game you play as Joel again. But in the beginning of this game you play as Abby and then like towards the middle or end of the game you play as Abby. Did I say that right? You said Abby twice. That's what I thought I did. Begin the game you play Ellie and through in the middle half you play Abby. So you play as a uh, protagonist in the beginning and the antagonist at the end for some reason. And so Abby catches up with Ellie and Joel and her girlfriend. No, not her girlfriend, just Ellie and Joel. And she beats the, the living piss out of Joel with a nine iron. And just fucking murks the dude in front of Ellie because you know he killed her dad and then she just captures Ellie and then doesn't kill her and then Ellie eventually escapes and then later on they don't really they don't really say like what happens in between all this but I think at this point you're playing as Abby hunting down Ellie and then she captures Ellie and Abby. Now, Ellie and her girlfriend, and then Abby starts beating the shit out of Ellie, and to the point where, like, just on the verge of death. And I think she goes to kill Ellie's girlfriend, who's pregnant with their dude friend's child, who is dead because of the cult. And. She's about to kill the girlfriend and she's like, no, don't. She's pregnant. And she's like, oh, good. And she's about to kill her. And then Abby's friend, Lev, I think that's his name, uh, comes in and is like, don't do it. And she was like, okay. And just like, if I see you again, type bullshit. And then just leaves them. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's just going to make him want to kill them. Yeah. 
So it's just a never ending plot of revenge at this point. Right. It seems like. So once all that shit was revealed, fans didn't like it at all. They didn't like Abby, the character. They didn't like the killing of Joel and they didn't like the possibility of Ellie dying. I mean, mm-hmm. cause people saying that she gets killed. Other says that she just gets the shit beaten out of her. So there's no real confirmation that I can find because any video of the footage posted has been like copy striked. Yeah. So it, it's gone. I, I cannot find it anywhere. Night dog is really quick on that shit, but you can find memes of, you know, some footage of it, but it's been doc uh, documented to where like, you know, it's really hard to tell what's going on. Mm-hmm. So basically, you know, fans took to Twitter yelling and screaming at right. Night dog and like, what the fuck is this bullshit? And Night dog was just like, well, it's, it, it's not all bad, you know, it's just leaks of just parts of the story. You're not getting the whole thing, mm-hmm. which I can kind of understand, you know, I mean, basically people, the, or the people or the person who leaked the video probably just took out the worst bits of the game yeah, and leaked it. But, you know, I personally am, am not a fan of killing of Joel because it just really served no purpose. Because he had real no no real reason of being there, right? I was talking about this with you earlier, and I was you said people have like walkie talkies or something. Yeah, I mean the cults like stay in contact with each other. I think through like radios or some shit. But like, does does Joel like do Joel and Abby? Do they have like walkie talkies to talk to each other? I have no idea. I mean, even then, like the best walkie talkies have like. Maybe not the best, but like the best I've seen have like a ten mile radius that they can communicate in, you know. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know how he just could m- magically catch wind of her being in Seattle. Yeah. Where is he? I don't know. I mean, from what I understand, the original uh, camp that Ellie and them are at is nowhere near Seattle. Mm-hmm. But the cult like came all the way from Seattle to fuck with them. And they killed uh, the guy friend for the lesbian couple. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they went all the way to Seattle to fuck with them. And Abby was also dealing with the cult shit. So I guess that's how she heard about Ellie and them. Mm -hmm. But I have no idea why Joel's there. It makes no fucking Uh, sense. I feel like they needed a way to get him there. Just because he's part of the plot. Like, yeah. you said at the end of the first game, he just sort of, like, left, right? Yeah, I mean, he saves Ellie, gets back, and then just he's just gone. Yeah, he just leaves. He goes to fly solo or whatever. Yeah. And then he just shows back up. Like, if, if he didn't care enough to hang around and, like, you know, live with Ellie or whatever, yeah. like, why does he care enough to go to Seattle to see her now? Yeah, I mean, I think... Part of the reason why he's left because he just went on a murderous rampage through a hospital of people who were trying to get the cure from Ellie. And I guess he felt some form of moral uh, turmoil. Turmoil, yeah. Because he, you know, saved the girl that he saw as a daughter, but he also uh, took away the chance of the world getting a cure, I guess. I guess, but based on what you told me about their methods of extracting a cure, yeah, they like, it was real stupid. Yeah, like they were like trying to di- dissect her, and they're like, I think they were trying to get to a certain part of the brain. Yeah, because of reasons, and it, it's like <laughs> and they were in a hospital. They had, you know, yeah. You said they had this hospital up and running, like they had the medical equipment working, and they had. Actual doctors, yes, in there too, yes, yeah, like medical physicians. So I don't understand why everyone was like, "Yeah, this chick that could, like, is has the immunity or whatever." We're just gonna take a piece out of her brain out, which I mean requires us to kill her, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 
Your DNA is in your whole <laughs> fucking body. Like, if you want, like, like I think even, like, it's like, if you really want to, like, it's like, her, like, DNA or some shit, you know, like, really badly, mm-hmm. you could just do bone marrow, too. Yeah, you could do, I mean, bone marrow hurts like shit, but it's yeah. not going to kill someone. Yeah. I mean, you could take blood samples. You could fucking. Like, if you wanted to be thorough and get as much as you can while keeping the person alive. Yeah. Blood and bone marrow. You know, I mean, cause like, yeah. like, like you were, like you said last and uh, this morning, final fluid. Yeah. Like you said this morning, if they fuck up, that's it. Yeah. They're, ch- they're it's gone. Yeah. So why would they like, while really only writing on a hypothesis here, like be like, yep, we're going to cut your brain open and take this out and it's just going to work. Yeah. I mean, even when I played the first game, I was like, this makes no goddamn sense. Yeah. It's like, you're you're just killing a child, like you said, just running on a hypothesis. There's there's n- no where saying that this is like definitive that we need this bit of your brain to make a continuous of uh, line of uh, um, serums to to make shit to cure people of this disease. Yeah, you know, because like that's just, that's just a one part of the brain. It's like you're not gonna be able to make enough. For the whole world, there's gonna no. make enough for probably your group. And there's no, you know, you don't know if that shit's gonna pass through your genes. Like, yeah. So, like, if you, one person, one person who is like immune to this now because of the cure, that doesn't say that your kid's gonna have the ability to fight that off. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, if she has this immunity, the best course of action. If you can't make a vaccine out of her blood, which is a continuous source because your blood cells regenerate, you know? Yeah. Uh, then just let her procreate. Yeah. And then her DNA will get passed on. And then you, you just have people from your group. Yeah. Mingle with her offspring. Yeah. It's going to take, it's going to take a while. Yeah. That's what I was but, thinking. You know, it's like, that's probably what, you know, I mean, yeah, you can make the vaccines and just let her do her thing and procreate and then just do that while still having vaccines. But then you have even more vaccines. Yeah. And but then throughout time, people will just be immune to it eventually. Yeah. The people that survive are going to be the ones that are immune to it to begin with. Right. Yeah. So that whole plot device makes no fucking sense to me. Yeah. And I heard rumors that like even Abby and some of the people that she's with have the immunity. So I was like, what, what the fuck is the point? How can you, how do they determine if you have the immunity? You can walk through the spores and not turn into the zombies. So it's literally like you, you either do get it or you don't get it. Like as far as like, do they just test people? Do they just, all right, there's a hallway full of spore zombies. Walk through them and see if you turn into one. I mean, I, Cause I guess it just happened by accident, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Cause like every time you see like a spore cloud, you got to put on a gas mask. Mm. And I guess like something I've happened where she just wound up in a in a cloud and just nothing happened to her. And oh, then okay. that word got around somehow. Right. They wanted her ass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but back to Joel showing up out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I feel like. When you told this to me, I was like, this is really lazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I joked around with you. I was like, how did he catch wind of this? The fucking carrier pigeon show up with a letter <laughs> attached to it. Like, yeah. How does he just know this? Like they just, I feel like they just shoved him in there for him to die. Yeah. And That's I what everyone says. I don't mind a main character dying. Yeah, as long as it's done well. I don't get up in arms about a, a protagonist dying or one of the whoever. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I think it's dumb, lazy writing. If you never let the good guy die and like keep throwing in plot armor and Deus Ex Machina <laughs> events and all this other kind of shit. Yeah. Because then that's boring and it's predictable. And who cares at that point? You know how it's going to play out. Yeah. If you just like brand them the hero and all that crap, right? Yeah. I mean, 
I, uh, I'm in, I'm in agreement with you. Like, if you're gonna kill off a main character, just do it right. Don't just toss him in there for the sole purpose of just them dying. Yeah. Because like, if he had, because like I said, he has no reason to be there, and no way for him to to be there mm-hmm. about knowing about Ellie. Like if I don't know, it just makes no fucking sense to me. So. Yeah, that's pretty much the premise of the game. And Nidog's response was surprisingly lacking, in all, in all honesty to me. You know, because like people are all, well, I don't know a percentage of people who are up in arms about it, people who actually give a shit, and who people who are just memeing on it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we were talking about like people were took to Twitter to express their grievances. And, you know, everyone's just like, well, just calm down. The game's not out yet. And uh, on top of that, the release date got pushed back to, I think, the 18th of this month. Uh, the release date for everything has been pushed back. Yeah. Um, it was, <sighs> the thing is, like, even if people gripe and complain and moan on Twitter about whatever, right? Yeah. People are still going to buy the game. Yeah. Almost everyone's still going to buy the game. Yeah. So. Yeah, because like I said, like um, from what I've seen, pre-order sales <clears throat> haven't really been affected. Um, I mean, a good chunk of people have like canceled their pre-orders, but not a lot to really affect anything. Right. Uh, wasn't there a huge swarm of drama surrounding like Borderlands 3? Or wasn't it Borderlands 3? Like, there was some crap going on with that company or something. I don't remember hearing anything about Borderlands 3. But I thought there was some garbage going on with Borderlands 3, but it didn't get affected at all. Like, oh. it had, like, way better sales than 1 or 2 and all this yeah, that, kind of stuff. Yeah, that's all I know is that 3, like, was really successful compared to all the other ones. Yeah, well, I'm going to look this up real quick on my Pajone. Yeah. Um I thought Borderlands 3 had some sort of like garbage surrounding it that and people were like we're going to cancel our pre-orders and all this mm. other kind of stuff but no one did and it sold better than ever, <laughs> right? It's probably some bullshit uh, controversy that didn't really fucking matter, which is one of the part, which one thing one thing else that I was mean to get to on Last of Us is the outcry of the killing of dogs. Remember that? Right. Okay, before you get to the killing of dogs, here, okay. I found an article from August 7th of 2019 that says, Mm -hmm. New Borderlands 3 controversy has fans boycotting the game. This may have been what I was talking about. Okay. Uh, Oh, it led to a hashtag on Twitter. Hashtag boycott Borderlands 3. Because those make a difference. Yeah. Uh, okay. It might be the one that finally forces 2K games to take action as fans have begun a boycott movement on Twitter. Wow. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a damn thing. <laughs> um, has brought scores of new negative publicity to the title. Borderlands 3, despite ex- previewing extremely well. Uh, nevertheless, experienced an extremely troubled development thanks to outside factors. Okay, whatever. Number of high-profile implosions on behalf of Gearbox Software, mostly linked to Randy Pitchford, have already dulled enthusiasm for what appears to be one of the year's biggest game releases. Pitchford is at the center of a lawsuit surrounding a possible and secret $12 million bonus paid to himself. Oh. 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 And has also made headlines for attacking gaming news publication Game Informer after alleging it had misinterpreted his definition of microtransactions. Somehow, that's not even the entirety of Pitchford's 2019. He also found himself at the center of a major controversy when ex-Claptrap voice actor David Eddings accused him of physical assault. Jesus Christ, this man. <laughs> uh, okay, now here I think this is what the article is written about now. So there were already several controversies. Yeah, just all around not a good dude. 
Now, Gearbox has another major controversy on its hands. According to YouTube and Borderlands content creator Sup Mato, Mato? Sup Mato? I don't know. Never heard of him. Uh, representatives from 2K Games allegedly accosted him for using development stream codes that have been available to the public for months now. He states the confrontation began April uh, 2019 when he covered leaked details from tester accounts attached to the Borderlands 3 Twitch extension. Uh, he was approached by two private eyes contracted by 2K that questioned him about leaks and other gameplay details. Could you imagine getting hired just to go shake a man down about what he knew about a video game? I feel like there'd be a low point. You're in my a career. private investigator. Yeah. And this like multi million dollar company is like, hey, go ask that guy what he knows about our video game. <laughs> like for real, dude? It's like no one's missing, no murder. Uh, what he then received he then received seven copyright strikes on his YouTube channel the next day. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. But like I thought this YouTuber was like hired by them to do this shit. Who YouTube was hired by? No, no, the guy that they they were attacking. I thought like he was like an advocate for two K games. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, well, it said he his YouTube channel like covered Borderlands things. I think. Let me go back up. YouTube and YouTuber and Borderlands content creator. Yeah, so his channel sort of I guess. If not centered around Borderlands, had a lot of things about Borderlands okay. in it. Okay. All right. Um. Huh. I think that's all it says about it. But that's it. Yeah. So I mean, so it had like there was already controversy around that one dude, like the this but, higher up guy that gave himself a secret twelve million dollar bonus and may or may not have assaulted one of the voice actors. Yeah, but all that happened, I'm guessing, before. Borderlands 3 was like, you know, close to being released, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. And then uh, so this shakedown is what got people up in arms. I guess. <laughs> Which is weird. Yeah. Like, um, that's so fucking dumb. Well, well, I mean, I guess, it's shitty what happened to him, too. But if a man did get, like, physically harmed, I feel like that's... An even bigger worse. issue. Yeah, that's way worse. Yeah, and like, I don't know. There may have been some uproar about that too because I'm not reading older articles. I'm reading this one from August of last year. Yeah, but I mean, it just really goes to show that people don't really give that much of a damn. Now, what does it mean? It says, so they accosted him for using development stream codes that have been available to the public for months. So what is a development stream code? I don't know. Like, like, that, like, did the devs stream some gameplay or something, and then he uh, used that footage on his YouTube channel? The only thing I can think of is, like, the codes that, like, Naughty Dog dig with Amazon that the mm-hmm. hackers were able to get into. But if it's... It said sim- they were available to yeah, the public, though. Yeah, but if it was similar to that, then it's available to the public, then they really have no legal stance. It's mm-hmm. available to the public. So I don't really know what the issue is. I don't know. It says he covered leaks from tester accounts attached to the Borderlands 3 Twitch extension. So I guess people were testing Borderlands 3 and streaming it on Twitch. And I don't, did he just go into their VODs and use their footage or something? Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. Either way, I, I don't think the man did anything wrong. No, he didn't. But sorry, that was a huge sidebar. I just oh, I that's fine. I remember there was something about Borderlands three, and and people were like, "We're not gonna buy the game." Yeah. And holy shit, it sold so well. Yeah. The only uh, example that I can think of that people actually follow through with that we're not buying the game was Battlefield Five. Because, yeah, I don't know if you remember, but. Battlefield Five got like a mega shit ton of heat. Was that the one with the chick with a prosthetic arm and a katana? Yes, and a katana. Yeah, she was a sniper and she had a katana. Some British chick with like one arm and a prosthetic on the other. Yeah, people, yeah. people, you know, were like, "Hey, could you not do that?" 
because you know you're trying to make a World War Two game, and can you make it like a little more, you know, realistic? Real. Yeah, that, that's what I've always liked about the Battlefield games in terms of sh- well, like in in the first person shooter genre. Yeah. They're far more realistic than the others. Yeah, Battlefield 1 is pretty much the only one I've played. It's fun as shit. I love Battlefield 1. It is really fucking good. I understand why people like it so much. But they were like, no, fuck you. <laughs> it's like, how dare you tell us what to fucking do? And oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're basically just, you know, doing all the races, homophobic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera buzzwords. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this, but do you know what the cover of battlefield one was it was a black dude no yeah. one cared you played as a black dude in the beginning of the campaign yeah who cares who no one cares who gives a fuck i think i personally think that that bit of the game was like too fucking short to compare to everyone else you know the thing that i didn't like about the trailer the commercial whatever they showed for battlefield 5 was the fact that like this one-armed person was just like hosing people down. Yeah. And it's like, y- you can't. You can't <laughs> control the firearm. Yeah, no, you're right. And like, the thing is like, there, there were women in World War II. Like, I think there was like a, a Russian all-woman sniper team. Yeah. If they just put, instead of a British chick, make it a Russian chick and don't make her an amputee. Yeah, the outcry was about realism yeah right yeah that we don't give a shit if it's a woman but you're gonna give us um like a woman that probably didn't like from a country that probably didn't have female troops yeah and then also has a disability a disability Uh, it's too much it's like you're trying to appease way too many crowds Mm -hmm. and it's so apparent and obvious yeah and so, uh, EA they made they made the game right. I think sure, I know there's a garbage ass like loot box system in Battlefield One. So yeah, probably. So if it's not EA, you can correct us. But so it's like EA was like, you know, just went ham on the people. It was like fuck you, like how dare you? Yeah, bu- yeah, that type of bullshit. They're like if you don't like it, don't buy it. And no one did. And yeah, fucking. Um, I think pre-order sales dropped to eighty-five percent, or like, it's like you know, they dropped by eighty-five percent. Dropped by eighty-five percent. Okay. Yeah, and it was. I think like, um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare was coming out then. I think like the the current real popular COD. Yeah, well, and, I've seen gameplay of the current Modern Warfare. And like the the team deathmatch seems really fun Mm because Call of Duty is known for like being really fast paced and stuff like that. Yeah. And so that looks really fun. I have played Warzone, which is like the free thing. It's fucking free and it's amazing. Yeah. Why wouldn't you download it? Um, Yeah. I played that with my brother some and that was really fun. Yeah. You know, so like. I don't know, even. If they came out around the same time. Yeah, and their sales were doing so much better. Like, I, I can't yeah. remember the list of everything that was coming out at around the same time, but they were at the bottom of that list of, like, sales. Yeah, what's well, like, there was also really no hype built up for Battlefield Five, probably because of all that social media garbage. Yeah. But, like, I remember with Modern Warfare, the best thing you can do I'm sorry, I'm burping a lot. Well, the best thing you can do to advertise your game, I think, in this age, is to let people stream it before it releases. Yeah. People were streaming the hell out of the new Modern Warfare game and Warzone. Yeah, I remember. Before they released. Like, holy crap. Like, you know, like when a game just spikes to number one and stays there for like, yeah, weeks or I remember whatever. watching Doctor Disrespect stream. Doctor Disrespect played it. That was it was really good. Tim was, the Tap Man and all of his friends were playing it. Uh, XQC was playing it. Yeah, this was this came out when Asmongold was on his like break. Yeah, but Asmongold was playing it the whole time because he released a montage <laughs> video of him running people over with a truck. Yeah, he won games just by 
running people over in a truck. Yeah, he had like a full squad game that they won just just with like all of them in a truck. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's probably the best example in recent history of people actually sticking to the word of, oh, I'm not buying it. Mm-hmm. Because... I feel like it was purely done just because the guy was like, well, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Yeah, because he was being smarmy about it. And yeah. the the lead director or directive writer for Last of Us 2, he didn't really do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some employees, like not really people high up, just people who work there, kind of said that. But, you know, the big guy was like, you know, just just chill guys yeah. trust me it's it's gonna be good you know just just bear with us so i think that's why you know i guess shit hasn't really tanked for them but people really didn't take too kindly of the other employees you know shitting on the other on the fans i guess right because they were just basically like saying like oh if you have a problem with it then you're just you know alt-right bullshit you know I'm like, right just like trying to label people yeah for like, no reason like trying to make everyone else out to be the bad guy yeah like for for no fucking reason it makes no right. sense so but other than that you know nothing really much has changed oh the dog shit uh <laughs> right sorry the dog stuff yeah so one thing that i saw was a big outcry quotations were people getting upset that you could kill Attack dogs. Yeah, dogs that are going to kill you if you yeah. don't kill them. Fucking German shepherds mm-hmm. that will chew your ass up and spit you out. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things is, is that like the cults, the NPCs have mm-hmm. named these NPC dogs, yep. like given the main, given the main, given them names as a way to give them like personality, you know, I guess. Sure. And if you kill said attack dog, they get upset and they like, you know, start cussing you out. It's like, how dare you kill my dog? Shit like that. I'm like, mm-hmm. bitch, you fucking sent him to kill me. What the fuck you want me to do? Right. <laughs> it's like, I mean, there, there have been attack dogs in several other games. Like I've, there's plenty of like COD games where, you know, one of the, the, um, the kill streak things. Attack it, dogs. It's attack dogs. It's like a seven kill streak. Yeah. yeah. No one gave a shit about that. But now because the NPCs gave the, the fucking. Dog's name. Are you yeah. saying the NPCs get upset when you kill the dogs? Yeah. Or? The NPCs get upset, but because the NPCs berate you mm-hmm. for killing a dog. And they also say like, how dare you kill Mr. Schnookums? Yeah. It was supposed to like make you feel bad on the inside, and like how, and then they were like, "How dare Naughty Dog make us feel bad about killing a dog?" It's not a real thing; it's pixels. Yeah, I mean, like uh, the NPC or the character, whatever can be written, however the fuck someone wants to write them. Yeah, if they're emotionally attached to their dog. Then they're emotionally attached to the dog, yeah, and it would that, make sense for them to be upset when you killed it. Yeah, if the developers want the bad guys to have some form of, you know, care for other things. I mean, like you can have like moral grayness, right? Yeah. Like you're, just because you're playing from whatever character's perspective, like it doesn't make everyone else the bad guy mm-hmm. or whatever, you know? Like, yeah. Like holy shit, if I was in an apocalyptic situation. And I'd be some, eating some dogs. Yeah. Well, and somebody came to me and they were like, hey, man, uh, we can take you in and we'll feed you and give you clothes and let you wash yourself. And all you got to do is believe this bullshit I'm spouting. 100%. Yeah. I'm out, I'm, I'm, I'm out of the waste. I'll I'm, join I'm a shelter. I'll join a fucking cult. You kidding me? Yeah. There's going to be like a fortified ass compound. People to talk to and socialize with. Yeah. Like, food. Yeah. <laughs> it's like food. Fuck war. yes. Let me join that cult. Yeah. I'll, I'm all in. That son. doesn't make them bad people. You know? <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess a discussion for another time. Any, whatever. Yeah. But like, you know, 
if shit turns sideways in the world and there's no food, I meet my dog. He's food yeah. at this point, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like I understand the whole companionship aspect. Oh yeah, like yeah. Not wanting to be alone and all that kind of crap. Yeah, but if push comes to shove, I gotta eat. Right. And I want to get him before he gets me. Like there are so many uh, examples of like solo protagonists that have a dog companion. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Like uh, pretty sure. Max in the Road Warrior movies had a dog. Yeah, uh, and yeah, in the Mad Max game, you get a dog, but he's pretty much wheelchair bound because like his legs are fucked up, and he's only yeah. in the back of your. Main I just car. remember in like the the original movies with Mel Gibson. Yeah, like he'd be eating out of a dog food can, and mm-hmm. then when he was done, he would just like toss the can down on the floor or the ground, I guess, and like. The actual dog would lick the rest. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. There's like Will Smith and I Am Legend. And his German Shepherd. The most recent one I can think of is John Wick. (laughs) Yeah. But I guess his reasoning was sort of justified because that was a gift given to him by his dead wife wife who had just died. Like she had just been put in the dirt. Like. Two days before that, someone killed that fucking dog. Yeah, and she planned for this dog to be given to him as like a going away present. Yeah, it's like a way to help him with his grieving. Yeah, it's like, hey, you know, I'm still with you through this dog. Through this dog named, what was it, Lily? I think that was probably his wife's favorite flower because when he reads the dog's name, he says, of course. Right? (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, there are all these... People that are like flying solo and have a dog companion, mm-hmm. right? All the time. And like, yeah, John Wick goes ballistic over the dog and then gets another dog. But that's like I said, it was a gift from his dead wife. Yeah, I think the dog is more symbolic. Like Will Smith fucking kills his dog because it, right. it gets infected by the zombie shit. Yeah. He's not like. Oh, I'm too attached to my little friend. I'll just keep him locked up in a room and he'll just be my little zombie dog. Fuck no, he snaps that thing's neck. I mean, granted, he feels like absolute shit doing so. Yeah, he's like cries a single tear because that's been his only friend for Lord knows how long. (laughs) The only one in the city other than him. Yeah. But like in, in like Road Warrior, Max just treats the dog like a fucking dog. Yeah. Right? Like... Not even like it's a friend or whatever. No. I don't know. He's, he's very indifferent on the beast. I, I expressed this to you earlier today at the gym. We talked about pretty much all this at the gym. Yeah. But uh, I don't like this culture that has surfaced on the internet over the past five, six years, whatever, where everyone just puts these dogs on a fucking pedestal. Yeah. Like any dog ever. Like a picture of any dog, a video of any dog. Everyone's like, oh, isn't that such a nice dog? He's such a good boy. Blah, 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 blah. You know? Yeah. And like, oh, like I said, like val- like putting the value of animal's life over the value of a person's. Right? Yeah. Because like no one gave a shit when you like shoot a hell, shoot an NPC up in any game. Yeah. No one fucking cares when you kill a cultist. Mm hmm. Or shoot anyone else in the whole fucking game, right? Yeah. You know? But, you know, you defend yourself against this animal, and an, you're like, An animal? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'm the bad guy now, because I killed a fucking creature that was trying to kill me. So are people angry that the NPCs berate you for killing their dog, or are they angry because they think Naughty Dog is trying to make them feel bad about killing a dog? I think it's the second one. Cause like, who says that's their intention in the first yeah, place? Yeah, I mean, even Naughty Dog says like that's not what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's like it's. I mean, we we like forget, I, I, forgive us for trying to make a living, breathing world, right? Yeah, like where people I mean, have personalities. Yeah, I I much more appreciate that because like they gave these NPCs like it's more realistic. Like, yeah, if I okay, if I was a part of the cult that we were talking about earlier, and fucking I got a dog, and we're tagging people. And I sick him after, and they kill my dog. I'm gonna be pretty. I'm gonna be pretty upset. Yeah, yeah, I would too. Yeah, so 
Yeah, I mean, it makes it makes sense that they're mad. It just does. Yeah, but, it just works. You know, <laughs> like you said, how dare they making make a uh, more realistic environment? Right. I just want to play a video game, and I want video games to stay the same and never <laughs> fucking evolve. Yeah. I guess is what people fucking want, right? Yeah. And um, people were also outraged that, uh, I guess, Anita Sarkeesian showed up at their place one time mm-hmm. four years ago, and they were like, oh, she has influenced the game for the worst. I mean... Like I told you earlier, I don't fucking like Anita. I trust her about as far as fucking toddler can throw her. You know, she she's just an all around not good person. She's a scam artist. She's just the worst. Okay. But I still think it's unfair that they're using her as an scapegoat yeah. to, you know, justify their anger. I mean, cause like the company has already yeah. said, like, we've hold the we hold these views similar to her. For a long time. Right, yeah. You told me, yeah, the company has said, hey, we have progressive views. Yeah, I mean, not there's nothing wrong having progressive views, but, you know, yeah, in the right way. You know? People are just... It's, it's so crazy how, like, even though people are probably more intelligent than they've ever been, I feel like that was the case probably up until, like, 10 years ago. Because, like, this... <laughs> Everyone thinks they can do something or everyone thinks it's okay to like turn into a fucking mob on social media and like do this weird virtual riot over social media. Yeah. Right? As like, if it fucking does anything. Right. Like people are like angrily posting things or, or disliking things or yeah. sending DMs or messages to people uh, and like thinking it's going to do fucking anything, mm-hmm. right? Like you're not getting anything done yeah, and you're not even trying to control or contain yourself. You're just being an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> just for the uh, sake of being an asshole. Yeah. It's, but now, it's, like, because of social media, it gives them a platform to screech into the void. Yeah. And, you know, that's the only thing people are going to pay attention to because, you know, if people don't have an issue with something, they're not really going to say anything. Yeah, you aren't, you aren't going to see 100,000 retweets or something on, on somebody saying, hey, uh, I like this game. I think it's good. Yeah. You know, you're not going to see that. Yeah, you're only going to see people saying, like, how dare they? That's all you're going to see for like, God knows how long people are going to stay mad. Yeah. And even then their memory of, well, I hate this shit is short. They're going to move on within like the next week. Right. To something, something different. Yeah. And people just want to be mad. I've been saying this for years, but like, especially with American television, there was drama on like every single fucking television show. Yeah. And I don't like any of it, which is <laughs> I mean, part of the reason why I stopped watching TV. Um, other than the fact that cable and satellite is like a fucking scam and a rip off yeah. ever since Netflix became a thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, it could be a show about anything. It could be like, uh, fucking, I guess, well, maybe I guess a really tame example of it would have been something like, uh, Pawn Stars, you know, where like right. the, the show is supposed to be about people bringing in items that could have historical significance and mm-hmm. being appraised by quote unquote professionals. You know, and some people like, like that idea, you know? Yeah. And it, like it, it's on the history channel, which Right. Lord, none of their shows recently have anything to do with history. Really. <laughs> That's true. Um, but like, it, it should just be that. Like, people right. coming in with cool items, like a chill show. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah. But instead, it's got this weird... I, I guess I couldn't say... I shouldn't say weird. But it's got this, like, dynamic between, like, all the all the people in the shop. Like, they're all characters. Yeah, which... right. Why would we give a shit about that? Yeah, like why? Why do we care about their care? Like them being characters, right? Like, yeah, like Chumley's like 
the goofy dude who, who messes up and stuff. Everybody's like, Chumley, what the hell are you doing, you know? And then the old man's a grump. Oh, yeah. never saw that one coming, right? Yeah. And then the son of Rick is like, I'm way better than my old man, and I'm going to show everybody that I'm better than my old man. Yeah. Right? And then, and then Rick's like, I own the shop, and I, I'm the smartest guy here. Like... Like, yeah. Like that's how they all basically are. Yeah. And it's like who cares? <laughs> and plus like it's all scripted. Yeah. It's like none of their reactions are their actual reactions. No. And it's the characters don't fucking matter because the characters are written out. It's not the actual person. Right. Like, what if you're gonna make it like a reality show about a pawn shop doing this shit, just show me the actual people. Or just don't at all. And just show me the fucking items that are bringing into the front door. That's really all I give a shit about. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to see the cool items. Yeah. Or learn their history. Uh, see their possible value. Yeah. That's all the show should be, really. Yeah. I mean, fuck, I mean, probably one of the most popular uh, YouTube uh, YouTube channels that, like, kind of do something similar to that is Forgotten Weapons. And that's, the dude, all all he does is just showcase weapons from a long time ago and that's it he tells you the history the like the purpose and you know whether it was efficient or not and that's it one of the youtube channels that i subscribed to recently and i enjoy definitely in like my top three out of everything i'm subscribed to on youtube it's just this channel of this japanese dude restoring oh, yeah. things he'll just find like an old rusted piece of shit whatever mm-hmm and he'll show his entire process of restoring it. Yeah. The man never speaks. Doesn't even show his like face. Well, I mean, he has like two his two oldest videos on his channel where like you could see him and he like talked to the camera and stuff. Yeah. That's before he started doing this restoration stuff. Ever since he started doing these restoration videos that are like far more popular than what he was doing. Yeah. He just shows his hands and like the st- Base he's working on, right? Right. And it's like 20, 24 minutes of him just like going through the process of like, oh, removing the grime or whatever, putting this in a chemical bath and restoring it. Yeah. The absolute like silence other than whatever background noise there is and like noise from him like right. scratching sandpaper on something or whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. Like I love that YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, I think I've like showed you this channel is like Alex Steele. He just makes weapons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's has, he has very bubbly, positive attitude and people fucking love him. So I'm like, my, I think like the best thing is to like either have a positive personality or no personality at all. Like either come on, say what you're doing and do it. Don't yeah. say anything at all. Or just, just be, you know, this, you know, uplifting dude. Mm-hmm. And just have fun with what you're doing. That's why right. I fucking can't stand like these pawn stars or the other pawn, whatever have you, or any of those type of shows. Cause like they're just fucking yelling, screaming at each other. Even, even at that chopper, you know, that the motorcycle show that was on history channel, I think, uh, orange County chopper, or American chopper. I think it was called American chopper, but the yeah. business was called orange County chopper. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't fucking stand that. Cause all they were doing is just yelling and screaming at each other. Just the dad and the sons yelling at each other yeah, all the like, time. It's, like, it's just so fucking annoying. Yeah, but that's what the that's what they tried to capitalize on when they showed new episodes where we're like, next week, here's what happens. Like Paul Jr. fucking throws a chair through a wall while yelling at his dad, <laughs> or vice versa, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, people gotta be somewhat interested because like the the youngest the away. youngest son got like so fucking tired of it he just like pieced out yeah and like at like a fucking art studio he just painted in yeah <laughs> he's like I don't want to be around this yeah it's fucking cancer it really is yeah yeah what a weird tangent the drama as a selling point is. To me, not a good selling point. Apparently, to the numbers, I guess it's a good selling point. Yeah. But, like, the people that enjoy watching the drama and, like, 
you know, like television for the drama and stuff are like the same people that are right, like, like riot all over social media. Right. Yeah. Like they just want conflict because I guess they, their mind has associated conflict with, uh, feel good chemicals (laughs) in their brain. They probably get some sort of good feeling in their body when they either watch drama slash conflict or engage in it, you know? So don't understand. Like it's like some weird sadistic shit. Like you gotta be one sadist, one big sadist to fucking go out of your way to cause shit for no fucking reason, you know? Yeah. I mean I can see like joking around, like being a shithead for the meme or whatever. Oh yeah, but like I, normally people are in, also in on the joke. Yeah. Like when like when you know we, we give each other shit or we give our friends shit. They're in on the joke. They know that we're just giving them shit. Yeah. But just to go out of the way, say, hey, dude, what the fuck is your deal? And you're like, whoa, what, what's going on? And you're just like, I heard you were talking shit. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, just that basic petty bullshit. I mean, drama is basically all just pettiness. Like, if you don't fucking yeah. like the dude, don't fucking deal with them. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, the, all the, the yelling and the griping and groaning and stuff over... Social media, because everyone has a, a you know keyboard courage, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's anonymity gives it's, you a backbone. It's a crazy regression because you know, like, used to, you couldn't say all these things about someone without eventually running into said someone. Yeah, you know, at some point in time. Yeah, and you know, people generally won't talk shit if they have to come across said person that they're talking shit about, right? Yeah. You know, because they'll keep it to themselves or, you know, like, just people aren't polite anymore. <laughs> people aren't. Yeah. People aren't polite. People are super selfish. And, like, if it doesn't benefit them in some way, they don't care. Yeah. I mean, talking shit about each other, uh, you know, that, that's been going on for God knows how long, but... You know, at least like, you know, if you talk shit about someone in the workplace, that person is going to find out eventually and it could cause the firing of both of you if shit escalates, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, most people would just, or if they know that that person ain't going to fucking stand up for themselves. It's like, it's like social media is like stream of consciousness, right? Yeah. Like stream of consciousness is like, you know, where you don't filter anything, any of your thoughts, you just regurgitate it all out into whether text. you're in the right or wrong <laughs> right and it's like because like you wouldn't see someone on the street like well, maybe maybe a, a drug user or something right but like you wouldn't not see not a normal person you wouldn't see 98 percent of people on the street just like trying to grab a stranger's attention and be like let me fucking tell you why i hate this company right <laughs> yeah People don't do that. They keep it to themselves, right? But yeah. Because because Twitter exists and whatever other forms of social media, Instagram, mm-hmm. etc. People like have a platform to speak on now, and they just speak about everything. Yeah. But then once they gain a following because of the shit they speak of, they think that they're some form of authority on. What are you talking about? <laughs> Getting like an ego because of how many like social media followers you have or whatever. Yeah. Like I'm an authority figure now. As if those people actually give a shit about you. Like you're just some idiot screeching on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't fucking care about you. I think a lot of them are just here because, you know, it's like watching a car crash. You can't take your eyes off of it. Yeah. A lot of people like drama. So they'll just follow you to see your, your drama tweets or whatever. Yeah. See you just mentally unravel. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, followers on anything mean fuck all because at any given point they could s- stop watching you, stop retweeting, stop doing, stop being in any form of like, you know, contact with you uh, in social media and you, you're just left with fuck all. Yeah. So, I mean, it really serves no fucking point of you gaining an ego because of numbers. Yeah, I don't know, but I also think you shouldn't let like there's that there's that aspect, like there's that one side where like you you gain this huge 
uh, a bit of like self-absorption over your your social media following or whatever. Yeah. There's also like the other side to it where like, you know, people tell you to go kill yourself and shit on social media. And then like <laughs> you get upset about that. And it's yeah. like, like, I understand seeing, I mean, seeing something like that wouldn't make anyone happy. Right. But like. Uh, when you're when you're put in the public eye, people are gonna say that kind of shit to you. Yeah, it's like I've seen over the years of me watching YouTube since 2007, the 13 years of YouTube. <laughs> um, oh, I got a good point to bring up, but, but you go ahead. But I have seen so many times on so many different people's channels, like, oh, I had to call the police because I was getting death threats, and it's like. No one is actually gonna try to fucking kill you over something you said in a YouTube video. But that's not gonna happen. I mean, do you know any time like I've seen like entertainers get like killed or attempted to mm-hmm. are by fanatics that like, you know, hold them in high regard. People who hate the show you, I are like very low percentage going to fucking right. kill you. I mean, if fucking Onision is still walking and talking today, I really doubt that you're going to die. Right. And it's like, I remember specifically like, uh, Swifty's channel. So Swifty did a very good job of always keeping his address a secret. Right. Right. Like if he went outside in his yard for a video, like he, like he would keep the camera down. Like he wouldn't show his front door. He wouldn't show the numbers on his mailbox. He right. wouldn't show his license plate on his car. Crap like that. Right? Yeah. Because he didn't want people showing up at his house. Yeah. Eventually, though, people figured out his address because I think he let it slip in a video or something. Right. But they weren't doing any crazy shit. You know what they were doing? What? Yeah. Like Swifty is like. A really healthy dude, like he always exercises and like eats. Oh, right. he's the, no, I was thinking of someone else. Yeah, he's a uh, um, World of Warcraft dude. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so like, <laughs> what people were doing now that they knew his address was they were just ordering pizzas and sending them to his house <laughs> for months. It's still a dick move. Yeah. But- he's, <laughs> Well, it's like they were already paid for. They're already paid for. They paid for pizzas and just sent them to his house. Oh fuck it, dude! Yeah, and <laughs> it's like it's like pizza. it's like ha ha ha. We gave you pizza when you're supposed to be a healthy man, right? <laughs> That's pretty. I mean, good. So he he said sometimes a pizza would show up and like it wasn't paid for. Yeah. Like that did happen to him sometimes, but the grand majority of the time, like people would just send him pizza, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Thanks, guys." I guess. <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah like uh, i don't know i mean and i think this whole like death threat thing has blown up because people talk about oh i've gotten death threats right yeah if you don't acknowledge them like, they eventually fade away like people all the time like oh i've gotten death threats so i had to call my local police department and tell them i'm getting death threats and it's like we could just not talk about it you know <laughs> like yeah Oh, okay. A good point, though, about, like, you know, people, you know, losing their shit because, like, someone said, you know, kill yourself. Yeah. This one chick did, like, a real despicable thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Well, this, is, this isn't it, but she tweeted, uh, coronavirus isn't killing men fast enough. She's, like, one of those people who just, just mm. hate men for men. Yeah. So this... 14 year old boy, you know, a 14 year old said, like, sent her a private DM saying, kill yourself, you know, right. Doing what 14 year olds do. Granted, he, he should know better not to do that, mm-hmm. but he's a 14 year old boy. So, what this chick did is put him on blast and doxed him, showed his face, showed his full name, mm-hmm. and like, found out his address like she did all this shit and she like the only reason why she like took those things down is because his mother begged her 
mm-hmm. to take him down. And like once they were already up for like a few days, she was like, oh, well, I guess you learned his lesson now and then deleted the tweets. But I'm like, the damage is done. Like, uh, how immature are you? This bitch is 40. That you let something a child says yeah. bother you that much? Like, if a kid just did that to me, I'm like, ah, oh, it's just a fucking kid. And even it's if, what they do. And even if an adult said, kill yourself, again, how immature are you? Yeah. You're to, not making yourself look any better than that person. Like, this whole strange culture now that has happened on the internet where people try to get their following to attack people. Yeah, the cancel culture. Yeah, whatever the fuck. I mean, you can't cancel a 14-year-old to begin with. Like, what is he's going to apply to a college four years from from then down the road, and that college is going to be like, eh, well, I mean, we would have accepted you... But this one like YouTuber got mad at you four <laughs> years ago. We can't we can't take you. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's not gonna fucking happen. <sighs> Isn't doxing illegal? It is. Aren't there laws against that? I, okay, I I thought there was. I really don't know at this point because people have been doxxed and fucking nothing happens to these people. Like people that are very much in the public eye all the time on YouTube or whatever. Have like doxxed people and nothing has happened to them. Yeah. Like how like I honestly believe that there were laws against I I really to guess fucking not at this point. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go to Robert Reeves Law dot com. Alright. It is called Fact or Fiction, doxing someone can get you arrested. Very first sentence. This is a fact. <laughs> this is the Reeves Law Group personal injury lawyers. These are the fucking cutthroat motherfucking ambulance chasers that are after their fucking money, right? Right. Like this so this guy ain't spouting no nonsense. So it says, Can doxing get you arrested? This is a fact. Doxing can refer to a broad array of conduct, but in essence, it is publishing private information about a person such as a home address, employment location, cell phone number, etc., usually out of a sense of revenge or social justice. Yeah. Yeah. How the fuck is Keemstar not behind bars at this point? Money. I mean, fuck, you toss enough money at anyone, they'll be like, sure, I'll look the other way. Uh-huh. Like I said, everyone's selfish. Every, uh, people are so fucking selfish now. <laughs> Cause like no one has to talk to anyone anymore, and no, so no one has to care about how anyone else feels. They don't have to consider anyone else's feelings, and they can say whatever they want to behind the screen and not pay any of the penalties. And like the people like that, the people that are like that, I'm not saying everyone's like that, but you know the people that are like that, like if you try to say anything to them anyway, like well the only way you can talk to them is probably like online, yeah, and they're just gonna like put you on ignore. Yeah. And like, so they don't have to see anything that you say because they don't want to be told that what they're doing is wrong yeah. in the first place. Because you walk up to them like, hey, man, I hear you have a problem. Let's talk about it. They're going to be like, uh, uh, uh no, we're good. Yeah, you they're going to fucking retreat and shrivel up inside their fucking hoodie or whatever. And then later on, put you on blast on social media for harassing them. Yeah, right? I can't <laughs> believe this person harassed me on the street. Here's his address. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. A long tangent just <laughs> took off. Video games. <laughs> uh, I've pretty much said everything I want to say about Naughty Dog. I cool. Mean, I mean, they tried to block people who were shitting on them, but they eventually gave that up because mm. people were just kept shitting on them. So I have a great example. It ties it all together. Does mm. it, it? It's. In a, it happened to me in a video game. And it's the whole, like, you know. Grievance. People and then, like, ignoring, whatever. Okay, so anyway. This was back in 2018. I don't know, not that long ago. When, uh, when the current uh, World of Warcraft expansion came out. Battle for Azeroth, right? Right. And I was trying to find mythic dungeons to heal. I was playing a restoration shaman. 
And I got into a group with these people. And it was this dungeon where the first boss is this ogre. And the way you deal damage to him is like he'll focus someone in the group. Mm -hmm. And while you're fighting him, these bombs get thrown around the place. So you run him into a bomb while he is focusing you. Right. And it stuns him. And then you deal a shitload of damage to him while he's stunned. So that's what was supposed to happen. That's how you're supposed to do the fight. So we're doing the fight, and bombs are getting tossed around, and the ogre dude like starts chasing the mage. Oh. And the ogre starts getting he's getting closer and closer and closer to the mage, and I'm seeing this from my perspective because I'm staying in the bag because I'm the healer. And the mage isn't moving, so I typed like you know, run in the, the party chat, you know? And, you know, I guess I didn't need to because, you know, mages can blink, like, instantly teleport 20 yards away or whatever. Right. So that's what the mage did. But the mage never tried to steer this man into a bomb. <laughs> Just avoided him and kept trying to damage him with spells, right? Right. And then... He focused on me, and so I got in my little ghost wolf form and tried to steer him toward a bomb, and uh, when I was doing that, uh, the, the, the mage was like, what the fuck are you doing, shaman? And I was like, I'm doing the mechanic. I'm, ru I'm running him toward the bombs, you know? Yeah. I didn't wind up making it. I didn't wind up getting him to a bomb because I think he had some sort of thing that knocked me back. And so like the knockback threw me in a wild direction and I couldn't get him into a bomb, whatever. We ended up wiping on that fight anyway. Big surprise, right? Uh, People weren't fucking doing the mechanic. And then we wiped, uh, I guess all of them were friends or something cause they all tried to blame me and they kicked me from the group. And then as like after I got kicked from the group, that mage was like, uh, next time learn how to play the game before you try to tell people how to play. And so <laughs> I started a response to this mage explaining how the fight works, right? Right. I was like, you are supposed to run this man into bombs and damage him while he's stunned. You weren't doing that. And blah, blah, you know, like... I like nothing in my reply was malicious or anything. I was, right. it was simply explanation. Yeah. And I hit enter and then it couldn't send because that person immediately put me on ignore after they said that to me because they didn't want to hear <laughs> what I had to say back. What a fucking coward. So when I clicked enter, it said that character doesn't exist. And I was like, ha <laughs> ha. That person does exist. They just put me on ignore. Oh, damn. Yeah. They just basically said, fuck you, and then blocked you. Yeah. Again, because that's the type of person that would never, never confront someone in real life. Yeah. No, they would fucking shrink inside of themselves and, like, run away, right? <laughs> they're not going to actually confront someone in real life, but because they're behind the keyboard in a video game, yeah. they're going to talk shit all damn day long. And of course, you know, with them pretty much telling you to fuck off, they knew that that you probably would respond to that, and they didn't want to hear jack shit from you. They just want to have yeah. that that personal victory of like I yeah. told them off, but they're never going to tell me off. Right? Exactly. There was another time, even like way way farther back. This was back in like Cataclysm, so probably like 2011 or something. Yeah. Uh, I was doing a battleground. And there are always, you know, these, I call them heroes in Battlegrounds that, like, try to take control of the team and, like, basically, well, not, like, try to take control of the team, but they will, all, like, just type away at, like, oh, you guys are dog shit, blah, 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 right? <laughs> like, the whole time. Yeah. And so, it was, like, getting the end of the Battleground, like, the enemy team was, like, running the flag back into their base, so it was pretty much over, right? Right. And this dude had just been bitching the entire Battleground. So I typed, dude, go take a nap. <laughs> and the battleground ended. And so I left. And then I went back to questing or whatever. I don't think I was max level yet. Yeah. 
And like 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later, I get a message from a character that was like something, something, whatever you fail ass warrior. Cause I was playing a warrior. Right. Right. I was like, holy shit. Was that like that guy? Cause we were on different servers. Right. Right. That guy made a level one character on my server so that he could bitch at me in a whisper. <laughs> so I said, and the same thing happened. I went to respond to him and it's like, oh, that character doesn't exist. <laughs> what? Yeah. He went out of his way. Uh-huh. To remember you, Re- remember your name. Remember my name and the server I was on. Made a character on my server to to like bitch at me. Yeah, and then probably left and deleted the character. And then deleted the character immediately. Yeah. Wow. I I have no words. That that's like. So much cowardice. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's unfucking real. It's dude. so cowardly when you do that. Like, I can't think that they're that big of a badass, do they? It's like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to fucking tell this dude off in a completely different server. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, there you go. That tie, that tied it all together. <laughs> so it's not such a strange thing. Uh, have we been going for long? Uh, an hour and 16 minutes. An hour and 16 minutes? Well... <laughs> I'd say that's good enough. <laughs> we had like kind of multiple topics, I guess. Sure. And Naughty Dog and us bitching about drama. <laughs> yeah. 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 I would say this was uh, a success. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. And they spell disaster. You. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good video. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining us again. Uh, episode 16 coming out one to seven months from now. (laughs) Um, so watch out for that. Yeah. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.